Hi class, we meet again in this video. I'm going to show you on how to apply, use your first law uh, energy, and energy balance for your closed system. The previous video I have shown you on how to calculate your moving boundary work based on some typical process such as polytropic process, constant pressure and constant temperature. And the working fluid for those example is your ideal gas. But uh, in this video, I'm going to show you on how to make use of your first law of thermodynamics together with your energy balance. And the working fluid used right now is your refrigerant 134A, which is basically your vapor. So let's have a, a recall. We are still in... Um, closed system where in this closed system you have a fixed type and the moving boundary work so both you need to determine your type of working fluid it's either vapor or ideal gas So we are going to apply your energy balance. So that we will obtain um, your Q or your W. So let's get back to the to this example. You have a mass of 1.2 kg of refrigerant initially at 1.6 megapascal and 150 degrees C. It is expands isothermally to a pressure of 0 0.7 megapascal. It is the refrigeration then undergoes a constant pressure process until the volume equal to your initial state. You need to show the process on the TV diagram and then you need to determine the initial volume, the work done and the heat generated and the final temperature of the refrigerant. So basically, uh, for this number 2, we are going to apply your energy balance equations. So first, let us uh, plot your TV diagram here. So because this is a vapor, so we are going to have this um, vapor curve. And you have to pressure so one is 1.6 megapascal and the other one is 0 0.7 megapascal and the process undergoes a constant constant temperature so let's say this is the point of 150 degrees C so it undergoes if I can all right. So it undergoes a constant temperature process. It is then undergoes a constant pressure process until the volume equal to the initial states. So now from here it's going to expand until it goes back to the same volume of your initial state so if I can mark this one as state 1 this is the state 2 and this is state 3 so you have your V1 is equal to your V3 so again we have a, a vapor problem over here right? works uh, between two pressure so you have 0 0.7 and 1.6 over here and it starts at 1.6 here with a temperature of 150 degrees C and it's going to expand isothermally means that uh, expansion is at constant temperature and when expansion happens you can see that your volume is going to increase moving towards, uh, towards uh, the right Alright, so 
afterward uh, it is stop it will the process will stop at a pressure of 0 0.7 megapascal and then it undergoes a constant pressure process this is your constant pressure process until the volume is equal get back to the initial state All right so the volume is the same so let's uh, write down um, the informations all the informations that we have so we have state 1 given to you pressure is equal to 1.6 megapascal and that your um, temperature 1 is equal to 150 degrees C so since given to you pressure and temperature you are going to check it straight away from your superheated table so since the working fluid that we are using is your refrigerant R134A so we will be looking at table A13 the value that we are looking for is your specific volume because in order to get your volume over here you will need these relations and your mass so from your the table you will get your V1 is equal to 0.019545 meter cube per kilogram. So straight we can we can um, calculate we can solve for your uh, question number one. So you are looking for your V1 is equal to your M times with your V1 here. So we make use uh, this V is equal to MV1 relations and you plug in all the values so you will get that the volume at state 1 is equal to 0 0.023 meter cube. Next is to solve the question number 2 where you need to calculate work done and heat generated in the second process. So second process here is this is the first process which is constant temperature. The second process is from state 2 to state 3, which is this constant pressure over here. So we will apply the energy balance. And you will see that uh, what's left here is your Q net, your moving boundary work, and the change of your internal energy. This moving boundary work uh, will be calculated from state 2 to 3 and since uh, in this problem you don't have any other work that's why your uh, work of other is being cancelled out and there's no kind of change in kinetic energy and as well as potential energy all right so as you can see here uh, your work boundary can be obtained from these equations and p2 is already given to you v3 is actually equal to your v1 and now you need to find what is the value of v2 then we will straight away um, complete this uh, question over here work done and once we got the work done so you need to substitute this uh, value into here in order for you to obtain this uh, q net right and that uh, another value that uh, we need to find is this uh, u2 minus your this is not one this is uh, i made a mistake here it should be three all right this is your u3 which is the final state minus u2 Next, uh, we try to uh, solve for your state over here. So given to you, P2 is 0 0.7 megapascal and that this is a constant te temperature process. So your T2 must be equal to your T1 which is 150 degrees C. Now, uh, since state 2 is given pressure and temperature, therefore you can check straight away from your superheated table. Uh, 
in this case since we are using refrigerant r134a so you can check from table a13 so from uh, table a13 you've got your specific volume which is 0 0.047306 meter cube per kg and these relations is going to be times with uh, your mass over here in order for you to get the volume so you make use of this equation and finally you will get your v2 is equal to 0 0.057 meter cube and this v2 if you see the value is slightly higher than v1 means that um, this is an expansion process your volume is um, expand now in state 2 also you will need another value which is your internal energy u2 so that uh, we can uh, solve this uh, uh, heat generated problem okay okay now we continue with your state 3 because you will need your v3 in order to solve for your work boundary and you need your u3 in order to solve for your qnet so in state 3, we know that your pressure is again the same constant pressure which is 0 0.7 megapascal and that your V3 is equal to your V1 so your specific volume at 3 is equal to 0 0.019545 meter cube per kilos. So to solve this one, you just uh, take this V3 value and put into this equation and we can solve for your work boundary. Right now what about your u3 so since given to you uh, in order for you to read your property table you need to know two known values so in this case it's given to you pressure and you have another one which is your specific volume so the question will be which table you are going uh, to look into is it going to be uh, saturated uh, vapor or is it going to be in um, superheated uh, or table right so if you see here 0 0.7 megapascal is actually equivalent to 700 kilopascal and the value for specific volume that we have is 0 0.019545 and if we check in this area right if we check between this uh, specific volume you will see that the value of uh, v3 which is this one lies in between these two because 0 0.019 is uh, slightly less than 0 0.02 and bigger than this this one so let's have a look at our tv diagram over here meaning that at state 3 it is actually already in um, uh, it is already in mixture region it is not supposed to be in the superheated so we make some amendments over here with this curve it is actually like this right so we are going to delete some so now we make some amendments uh, in your TV diagrams. You will see that your state three is in your um, mixture regions, right? All right. So in order for you to get your internal energy over here, since um, your state three is in a mixture region, so you are going to make use this uh, relation, which is this is the general form. But since you are looking for your u, so you uh, substitute this one with all the u value, which is your internal energy. But before you can do that, you will need your x here. So in order to get your x, you make use of this v and plug it in, in these uh, general equations. And you will obtain your x, which is x is equal to 0 0.656. And then you make use of uh, these general equations again to solve for your U, 
and finally it gives you your u is equal to 190.720 kilojoule per kg all right so now that we have all the values that we need which is your volume at 2 internal energy at 2 volume at 3 and internal energy at 3 you can straight away solve for your q and your work boundary over here so when you plug in all the value needed so you are going to have work boundary from the process 2 to 3 is negative 23.80 kilojoule this negative value indicates that this is a compression work so you are going to have um, a change in volume towards uh, uh, from larger volume towards your smaller volume so if you can see that the volume at 3 is uh, less than the volume at 2 and then next uh, once you got your work boundary at 2 3 so you uh, move into these equations and then you will get your Q net over here, which is negative 176.228 kilojoule. And again, this negative value indicates that heat is generated during this process. So basically, this is a, your heat rejections. Right, so finally, is to answer the third question, which is the final temperature of the refrigerant. So you can see state 3 is the uh, uh, final state. And at the final state, the pressure is 0 0.7 megapascal or equivalent to 700 kilopascal. And you already know that this is happening in uh, mixture region. This point 3 here is actually in the mixture region. So you just read the saturated temperature in this constant pressure line. So the saturated constant temperature at this uh, uh, the saturated temperature at this constant pressure line, you are going to read from this uh, table which is your A12. So at 700, the T saturated is 26.69 degrees C. So the final answers are for question number three is actually T3 is equal to 26.69. Degree C. Right. So, so we have finished answering um, this type of problem. Uh, if you have any question or any inquiry regarding this uh, particular problem, please uh, state your question in the comment section. Thank you.